For this video, we're going to talk about Code.org um, Lesson 16 Keyboard Input. So this lesson focuses on basic, you know, using the keyboard to create different things within Code.org. Really helpful for games and things like that. Um, so we're going to kind of work through this kind of step by step. I'm not going to give you answers for all of these, but kind of help you with each step of the process to understand what is going on and what the lesson is actually asking you to do. So for this, it is as read the program carefully, make a prediction about what will happen when you press the space bar. So if we look down here for the code, then we can expand this. It does say run the code while the program is running, press the space bar on your keyboard. But if we look at this, what's going to happen? Well, when we press the space bar for text, it's going to do something. And when we run this, it's going to more than likely happen at the 200, 200 mark here. So it's going to, something is going to show up. So the idea is you're going to make a prediction about what could occur. If I went ahead and actually ran this, and if I typed in my answer, I think that something is going to appear at 200, 200. So something will appear. Now, if in the past when we've done this, we've used Booleans and things like that. But we know that when we press the space bar, something's gonna happen to 200. If we put a Boolean here, it would do true, false. Let's just see what happens. Something will appear here at 200, 200, that we know. So we run it, false pops up. And if I press the space bar, if that is actually keyed down, because that's the command, it's gonna say true. So like a, like a Boolean, it's just keeping track of whether that has occurred or whether it has not. It's basically yes, no, true, false, those kind of things. So when I press the key down, it's going to say true. And it is at the middle of the screen, like I had assumed or predicted. Okay, so now we're going to go on to part two here and focusing on the key down as well. We can drag this over just a little bit just to give ourselves a little bit more room, but it says the program uses the key down block to detect whether a specific keys are being pressed down. Run the code and try pressing the P and H keys. Well, if we notice down here, when we press the key down H and key down P, something occurs. The animation changes. If we press H, it looks like there's going to be an animation for this particular sprite that's in the middle of the screen. Currently, it's a giraffe, and if I run this, it's a giraffe. If I were to press the H key, it's going to more than likely change this to a hippo. If I press the P key, it's going to change to a pig. So if I press the H key like that, you'll notice that it displays a hippo. And if I press the P key, it changes it to pig. And that's basically what happens with these. So now they want you to add code to change the sprite to a different animal when the R key is pressed. So we're going to take the R key and when we press the R, something's going to happen. So then you're going to have to add one of these animations and have it change to a different character. Okay, if we look at step three of the skill building, again, they're going to give you another set of instructions here for the keyboard. It says you can change your sprite's position based on key presses in the same way you change this animation. Add a conditional statement to check if the right arrow key has been pressed down. So what we're going to need to do is in here, we're going to add a conditional statement and those would be over under control. So an if is a condition. If that condition is met, we're going to do something. Then we're going to use the key down to detect if the right arrow key has been pressed. So notice we're focusing on the right arrow key and we're going to use key down. So we're going to go to world and we have key down. I'm going to drag that in there and see how it gives us the options. It says right. So we probably more than likely want to select right and then add code to move the sprite to the right if the right arrow is down. Add the counter pattern inside the if statement to make the sprite move to the right. Okay, so then we want this character to move to the right when we press the right arrow. And we can do that by using changing the X location. So when we press the X, we're going to have it move across. Okay. So I could drag this in here and notice I have sprite.x equals something. Well, we're going to put math in, drag that over. So as I press right, or, and I need to change this to bug because this is the character that we're going to be animating. And x is the, the type of 
system we want to use here, dot y would make it go up and down. Notice how if I watch the dot, the y, if I move it up and down, it goes up. If I use the x and I drag it across the screen, the x is changing. And I can see that on the grid here as well, but if I move my scroll, you know, cursor across here, the x is changing. So what I want to do is say that bug.x is going to increase by 10. Okay. And so if I run this and there's my bug, if I press the right arrow key, it's going to move across the screen. And I can change this. I could make this 5, 10, however much we want. But this is how you make it move to the right. The next skill building, let's make the gears spin only if the space key is pressed down. So we're going to have to add code that will check if the space key is pressed down, add the if statement in the draw loop, use the key down to detect if the space key is being pressed, and then it says adjust the program so that the gears only rotate when the space key is pressed down. Move the, move the three lines of code that make the gears rotate with the counter pattern. So again, we're going to have to use an if in our draw loop. We always want to make sure we keep those. So we'll start with that, and then we want to use key down. So if it's keyed down, and I believe they said the space key, so we want to make sure that we change that to space. When that happens, then we want the gears to move. And so if you look at the rotations here, we can actually add these into this. So currently these are changing here, right? But we don't want them to rotate just so the gears only rotate when the space key is pressed. So if I run the program right now, they're actually moving. If I want them to not move and only move when I press the space, it's a simple thing of moving these down within the if. If I drag these down here, that would be one way to fix it. And so actually, let's just try one of these and we'll see what happens. So I have my red and green are outside. They're going to run and the blue is not. And you'll see that the blue is not. But when I press the space, now the blue gear moves. So you could add those down to your if to make that move. I go to the practice. Now you're going to get some different coding things and you'll want to work on these. But if you've gone through these skill buildings and kind of followed along here, that would give you a good start on completing the um, practices. Hopefully this video helps you and learn with the keyboard control in code.org. Good luck.